questions for Kate. Um, so, considering the effects of climate stresses on mental health, what should feature in a long-term policy to ensure that rural Australians have access to quality services with these catastrophes only expected to worsen in Australia's future? Yeah, it's a big question. Um, there's a lot of things that need to be done in regional Australia and I think the first thing is just putting the focus back onto them. Like, we are the ones that are really struggling through a lot of these issues. Um, I was looking at some statistics and when I was born, out in the far west of New South Wales, I actually, well, people out my way had a longer life expectancy than people in Sydney. Mm. Today, we are five years less. We know there are some serious problems out there. We know with suicide, self-harm rates, you know, they're about twice the rate of people in the cities and we don't have the services there to actually be able to help these people. And we've been the forgotten people for so long and I think, you know, it goes to our Aboriginal brothers and sisters as well, exactly the same. Out in the far west, we're 13% Aboriginal population. Um, so we do have a lot of these similar problems and it's not investing in health and education and, you know, even aged care services and all these things. Like, all we need to do is start investing in regional Australia and we want to make them places where people want to live. We saw with COVID, you know, this sort of movement with people going, no, nah, I've had enough of the cities, I want to go out into regional areas, but we don't even have digital connectivity. I mean, like, if I am really struggling and I want to call up someone to, like, be on blue to have a chat about something, most places I can't even do that. I saw um, on the front of a newspaper today, there was a, a bloke who um, had a farm accident and he was 60 k's out of Narromine, I think it was, mm. and he didn't have phone range. And it was like, he broke like pretty much every bone in his body and somehow he survived. But like, this is what we're going, this is what we're surviving with. And honestly, like, you just, you feel a bit like second class citizens a lot of the yeah. time. And you know, all it takes is a bit of investment. And you know, I think city people are ready for that. They want to, we saw during the droughts and fires, you guys care about us. Unfortunately, it's our government that doesn't. And I really want to see whoever gets in, you know, at the next election, we really need to see some investment because guys, we're on life support out and, there. And well, I mean, this uh, we're having an election and, and I would say this is about the economy and as someone who grew up in country Victoria, um, I understand that it's very important that we do get investment into the regions and on the question we just had on climate change um, and that transition, I mean, uh, the big winners from transitioning to renewables is going to be the bush um, and you're going to see hydrogen, you're going to see offshore wind, uh, you're going to see, uh, you know, pumped hydro. Um, so those projects are there. There's always more we can do. And, and, and what about the direct question here about support mental health. for mental health? Well, I think it's one of the other benefits from the pandemic, and I think there have been some good changes to our lives, has been the advent of Medicare telehealth. So you can now get access to mental health services um, on the phone. You can talk to the doctor and then, then you can get a Medicare package to talk to a psych. And I think that's really important. And I know it's something that our government has, has retained permanently. Mm. Well, as you know, Stan, like me and climate and mental health are together. And I've, I've got to say that the, the mental health plan being available on telehealth, that is good, absolutely massively life-saving. And I'm, mm. I'm very, very grateful that that happened. Um, uh, to, to, your, to your question, the climate resilience isn't just desailed plants and seawalls. Climate resilience is preparing communities to, OK, you've lived here your whole life. These storm surges are making it un impossible to live here. We're going to keep your community together Somehow, we're going to figure out how to, how to move you to where it's safer. And whoever gets in, if they don't have a plan for that, they're letting the people who are in the most vulnerable parts of our country absolutely down. They are failing them. And they have to think about this stuff. The, 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 the ocean was over the seawall at Bondi the other day, hitting the, hitting the RSL across the street. This isn't in 50 years from now. It's now. It's today. M Megan, um, we just heard Kate there talk about the, the rates um, in rural areas. And we know the rates when you look at suicide rates and youth suicide rates are so much worse in Indigenous communities as well. What would you like to see? What, and again, we talk about the Uluru Statement input into policy. What would you like to see, specifically when it comes to Indigenous communities and dealing with the scourge of, of mental health and increasing numbers of suicide, particularly amongst youth? Yes, Stan, the issues that Kate raised are, of course, amplified a thousand times in our communities. Um, and the issues that she spoke to are ones that we've been grappling with for decades and decades and decades. And I, I just notice Kate's face sometimes on the panel. There's this palpable sense among so many of us that policy, politicians just don't listen. They, they're not listening. 
Um, and, and when we think about climate resilience and I think I was reflecting on the IPCC report that does actually reference the Uluru Statement from the heart. Um, and I think about some of the things Kate has said in the past about a voice for farmers. And I just think about the ways in which actually there are many, many things that our government, our parties need to be talking about as we move into what is, Stan, um, just un... It is... We are not prepared for what is coming. Mm -hmm. and, and Stan, in the Uluru Dialogues, this is five years ago, mm. you know, and with my UN hat on, Stan, I've been going to the UN as an expert for 25 years. I was there when the Inuit were talking about the, you know, melting permafrost. Um, you know, they, I've been there when the Pacific Islands have talked about how it's dramatically changed their lives. And, um, and, and looking at the kinds of measures that need to be taken to ensure that, you know, we can grapple with this as a nation and, you know, our people in the dialogue spoke a lot about climate change and the need to bring peace to the country. And, and the way of bringing peace to the country, you know, obviously this was through the voice to parliament specifically and a new set, a settlement, something that has never been done um, between First Nations people and Australia, but, but saw that, you know, as a way of allowing us, Stan, to have the mechanisms to work together mm. to face what's coming. Because, you know, when I, you know, reflect on our mob and how they stepped up in Lismore, it was devastating, mm. the floods there, devastating in South East Queensland over Christmas. The bushfires and all of the, incre like, just, you know, um, devastating ways in which our people have been saying for decades and decades that climate change is going to dramatically impact this nation and no one listens, Stan. You know, no, we've been talking about this for a very long time, but there's no mechanism for our people to have a voice to the parliament and to the executive to give input, right? There weren't any blackfellas that, you know, sitting at the table in terms of that kind of bushfire response, mm -hmm. you know, nor the vaccination rollout, right? Um, I think there's a lot of, you know, similarity, Stan, with, you know, with the panel in relation to how do we get... The, the, demo, the democracy that sits in front of us to listen to what it is that people are saying on the ground. Because mm. if they listened, they would understand more um, what it is that, you know, Australians are enduring on a day-to-day -day basis. And, and, you know, what Kate talks to, that's what black followers mm. have to put up with I all the time and have since 1901. And, and Nobody listens.